Let's pray. Merciful, all loving God, Lord God, today, on the second day, the second Sunday in June, the, the day we traditionally call Children's Day, the day we traditionally call Decision Day, the day we traditionally call Promotion Day, the day that we look out among ourselves and we see the best in ourselves and we call it out. We ask, oh God, that since you are the best, that you show up and show out among us today. God, let Rachel decrease so that you gift us with the very word of life, of hope, of joy, of peace that saves, that heals, that comforts, that renews, that restores, and that makes sure that we don't leave here the same way we came. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, can y'all do me a solid? Can you open up your Bibles? Um, to the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, I'm going to read the first 11 verses, and I'm going to read it from the message. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, from the message translation. When you have that, feel free to say amen. Listen for the word of God, and let me warn you, um, the message has a little bit more punch. So y'all ready? Comfort, oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem, but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough. And now it's over and done with. Thunder in the desert. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the valleys. Level off the hills, smooth out the ruts, clear out the rocks. Then God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God has said. A voice says, shout. I said, what shall I shout? These people are nothing but grass. For their love, their love fragile as wildflowers. The glass withers, the grass withers, the wildflowers fade. If God so much as puffs on them, aren't these people just so much grass? True, the grass withers and the wildflowers fade, but our God's word stands firm and forever. Climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of good news. Raise your voice. Make it good and loud, Jerusalem. You're the preacher of good news. Speak loud and clear. Don't be timid. Tell the cities of Judah, look, your God, look at him. God, the master comes in power, ready to go into action. He is going to pay back his enemies and reward those who have loved him. Like a shepherd, he will care for his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms, hugging them as he carries them, leading the nursing ewes to good pasture. Verse nine, climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of good news. Raise your voice, make it good and loud, Jerusalem. If you will indulge me, the topic for today is, it's time to holler. Um, now, when I grew up, there were certain things that you were not allowed to do if you were a young person 
among folk who are older than you. You are not allowed to raise your voice. And you definitely weren't allowed to holler. I mean, unless you were under the age of two and then folk expected you to holler because let, let's be honest, when you're under the age of two, the only way you can communicate is hollering. Uh, but, but if you were two and up, um, you were expected to speak at a level that was respectful and calm. And I believe one of the issues with the church today is we're still operating by those rules. We're, we're operating by the rules that we need to be calm and level, not rock any boats, not make any moves, not do any significant changes. But church, when you're in the desert, you need to holler. When stuff is messed up, when you're in the wilderness, when there is more wrong than there is right, you can't approach the change that God needs when there is no justice or when there is justice, but it doesn't even trickle down, let alone roll down like waters. That's when it's time for those of us who know that God is a keeper, those of us who know that God delivers, those of us who know that God saves, those of us who knows that God hears. It's time out for us to be quiet. I think the church needs to make some noise and not just any old kind of noise. We need to holler. We need to holler out danger. We need to holler out the God that created the heavens and the earth has a better destiny for you. There is no reason for you to choose hate instead of love. There is no reason for you to believe the message that you are not the beloved of the most high God. There is nothing that God has ever created that God didn't finish the creation going, ah, boom, that's good. So how is it that we allow people to enter into our sphere of influence and walk away still believing that there is no godly good in them? How is it possible that we can be in spaces and places where we can see folk bullying folk and do nothing about it? How is it that we can be in spaces and places and we keep silent when we know that lies become history and truth? is pushed down and silenced. Okay, real talk, y'all. I, I, I gotta be honest. I'm, 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 I'm still reeling from participating in the marker dedication for Margaret Sis Vinegar, who right at the turn, well, the end rather of the 19th century, in 1882, she was 14, y'all. That's a baby. And she was sexually assaulted by a man who was raised to believe that regardless of their age, no female of color was able to say no. And when folk defended her and ended up taking that man's life. Instead of being able to receive a trial, they were stolen out of the jail, along with her daddy who wasn't even there. And all three of those black men were hanged. And then later, this baby was tried for capital murder and found guilty twice and died in a prison in Lansing six years later at the age of 20. 
And the story that was told was that she was a prostitute. No 14 year old is a prostitute unless somebody has prostituted her. No 14 year old gets engaged in the sex industry unless somebody made her. And to not recognize that she was a victim then and for it to take 144 years for us to set the record straight. Took some folk hollering. It really did. It, 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 it took folk going, something's wrong when we can look at somebody who is a child and not recognize that she is a child. Something's wrong when we cannot acknowledge even in the church that black girls and black women, native girls and native women, Asian girls and Asian women, Hispanic girls and Hispanic women, white girls and white women are still considered property who cannot say no. It's 2023, if that wasn't true, I wouldn't keep getting notices from the Lawrence paper about another somebody being charged with sexual assault. Another somebody being charged with indecent exposure to a minor or a child. Um, And honestly, I'm ready to holler. Honestly, I'm ready to be the voice that says, the time has come for us to be honest with each other and call out sin that allows anybody to say that anybody that God has created is less than anybody else. I honestly don't care if you're an adult and you're looking at a child and you have decided that because they're not an adult that they don't get to say no to you. You know what? Everybody has body autonomy. Nobody has the right. Nobody, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you gave birth to them. I don't care if you brought them into the world. No, you don't have the right to take them out. Only God does. And they have the right to let you know that your touch is painful and unwanted and should not come their way. But more than that, the rest of us have the right to back them up with a holler. Because every now and again, let's be real, young folks hollers get ignored. I'm being real, they can't vote. So politicians don't pay attention. They can't vote. So school boards don't pay attention. They can't control anybody's salary. So teachers don't always pay attention. That's why we are in their lives. They are living in as much of a wilderness as us adults are. And when they cannot be heard, that's the moment when we amplify. Did you hear what I said? Right. I didn't say we holler for them, we just amplify the holler. I didn't say we take their voice away, I just said we just amplify the holler. You know why we do that? Because when we amplify the holler for justice and peace and joy and transformation, guess what happens? The world changes. Y'all don't believe me? Do you know when the civil rights movement in the 1960s actually began to shift? It really wasn't when Martin Luther King began preaching all over the world. It was when students stood up to dogs. It was when children 
began to holler and their parents who had been groomed to be quiet said, if my eight year old can holler, show enough can I. If my 15 year old can holler, show enough can I. And the mamas and the daddies amplified the holler of the children and the grandmamas and the granddaddies amplified the holler of the children. And when multiplicities of generations began to holler, that's when the nation of the United States began to shift. I'm saying, I'm being real. It's time for us to holler. It's time for us to call sin what it is and no longer allow it to stand. It's time for us to holler. And we are supposed to keep hollering until justice begins to roll down. And we are supposed to keep hollering until justice begins to roll down. And we are supposed to keep hollering until justice begins to roll down. And once justice begins to roll down, we keep hollering because it's not enough for justice to be just about us. It's gotta be about everybody. It's not just about little black girls and black women. It's not just about little Asian girls and Asian women. It's not just about little native girls and native women. It's not just about little Caucasian girls and women. It's about the brothers. It's about the sisters. It's about the daddies. It's about the mothers. It's about the aunties. It's about the uncles. It's about all us. Those of us in the church and those of us who would love to be in the church but think we ain't welcome in the church. It's time for the people of God to holler. And do you know why it's time for us to holler? Watch this. The reason why it's time for the people of God to holler is because God is hollering. And if God is hollering, if God is shouting, I need you to preach, I need you to reach, I need you to get loud with it. If God is getting loud, then we ought to holler back just as loud as the God who created us. It's time for us to holler, church. If you got folk in your life who you think are suffering and you can't see how they can get out of their suffering, you need to holler. If you got folk in your life who you've been trying to convince that there is hope and there is joy and you've been doing it in a soft and sweet way, maybe not at them, but maybe invite them to hollow with you for the change that they need to see. Look, church, the message is simply this. Unless the church of God begins to holler, unless the church of God begins to hold ourselves and the world accountable, we will not see the change we need to see because we will not be the change God needs us to be. I get it. A whole bunch of folk ain't like me. I'm sure y'all notice I don't have issues hollering. <laughs> A whole bunch of folk ain't like me. A whole bunch of folk like to be quiet, but guess what? The only quiet voice that has maximum impact is God's. And since you and I ain't God, every now and again, we got to holler. And real talk, even the quietest among us has something to holler about. It's time. It's time. It's time, it's time to holler. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God.